I feel like she moves through her life understanding her worth, understanding the worth of her family, being brave, all of those. And so it helps when you have Michael Jordan saying, I think you have her qualities. It's like, holy <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben Affleck. Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. I got it. I found him. Who's that? Jesus? Can't afford it. I'm willing to bet my career on one guy. My name's Sonny Vaccaro. I'm with Nike. Do you typically make it a habit of showing up at people's front doors unannounced? I don't like to take no for an answer. Oh, man. Here we go. One of the things that was really interesting to me about the business side of the story was being paid a license fee or a salary versus a, an actual ownership or percentage. And oftentimes, I've seen with whether it's in the entertainment business or the sports business and, and businesses where you have like young people, you know, coming in and signing contracts, they're historically been taken advantage of, frankly, and, and paid, you know, far less than the wealth that they generate for other people. Uh, I would argue that's that's still the case, for example, in college athletics, where the athletes are not paid inexplicably. I, I just, it baffles me how you could have a billion dollar television contract and the people who actually play the games that people want to watch receive nothing. That's a, something that's important to me, and so the a movie centered around that aspect of the business relationship and the step towards something more fair, which is a place I don't think we've yet arrived at, but that, that initial momentous step and the, the sort of ripple effect that that had on, on the business uh, downstream, I thought was the most interesting aspect of the, the business story. When Ben calls you up and uh, asks you to do something and, and you get the, the cast list, you're like, yeah, I don't have to read it. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> this is the A team in front of the camera and behind the camera, and it was, it was it's kind of like a family affair. It felt like you were just hanging out with friends, having fun, making a movie. And some of us overlapped, some of us didn't. I didn't get to work with Marlon, but... That's because I was told to keep Marlon away. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. It be a problem. I, I knew it was You guys something. had some <laughs> history. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it, it, was, it, it was just fun. It was, uh, it was easy to just step into these characters, you know. Um, it was just a joy to work with, with Ben and Matt and the, the whole crew of these guys and easy, breezy, yeah, yeah. live. That's a good, it that's a good it was a live wire, you know, the set was alive the whole time. And yeah. like I said, trust. Yeah. Trust is a big one. It's a big one for me. I mean, just, it's a big one for me in my life. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but on a set, especially, to, that you can trust that a director who is in that lens knows what they're doing, knows what they're seeing, knows what the vision is, knows how to execute. It didn't hurt that we worked, what, six, seven hour days. You know, I've worked the 21 hour days before and you can't get anything done. And the freedom yeah. that you get, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. I, I don't even, I barely stick to my own lines. So, <laughs> like seriously, I spend time when I write a movie rewriting everything I wrote. Mm -hmm. And so it felt good that, you know, that was welcome. You know what I mean? That you go to a set. It was necessary. The movie was going to not work if you all didn't contribute already, and have know? authorship and contribute to that mm -hmm. and tell those stories. It was very upfront. Like, yeah. you guys had helped me. You, oh, yeah, I'm just not my voice. I don't understand all of these people in the way that I need to, and I needed filmmakers, you know, mm -hmm. not just a, actors, people who are going to bring and what you wrote and contributed, what you wrote and contributed, what you wrote and contributed, what you wrote and contributed. There's nobody here who, for whom, the, frankly, the best stuff isn't the things that they contributed as artists, and it feels like all you have to do is just be open, open to that and go, yeah, I want that, and, and see that you show people that it's valued and appreciated. I guess sometimes you hear that, yeah, 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 try something, and you do mm -hmm. a take, and then they come back, Cause we, let's try one with <laughs> yeah, lines. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it was, and it was so much fun working with these actors, working with Jason and Chris and Chris. You know, it was, it was great. And, and Matt, you know, being in those scenes with those guys. It was a great and, relay race. Yeah. <laughs> Passing right. the no, it was really mm -hmm. fun. It was just mm -hmm. so much fun to see them working. And it just gave you energy. It gave you life because of that, what you talked about, that freedom, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that Ben, you know, had on the set. It had to be like when Bill Russell coached uh, the Celtics because <laughs> Ben is just like he said. When somebody, when a director come to you and say, hey, man, let's figure it out and let's have fun. And, and Matt, right away you get comfortable like, Good, because I don't know what I'm going to do either. <laughs> and, you get, and it was like kismic to me because I know Howard White and it just like God-given role. And Howard is somebody that I knew I can channel, you know, uh, who, who he was about, what he's about and 
who he is, but he had me talking to people when he was five years old, like uh, people he was hotscotching with in the street and the coaches and teachers and up to Charles Barkley saying, you know, yeah, he's my mentor. That guy like Confucius and this and that, <laughs> that and things his mama told him, you know, don't pass people walking in the street and, and don't say hello. You know, I knew I knew uh, that, you know, from Georgia, he's from Virginia. I knew I can channel that and his dialect and all that stuff. And his positivity, everybody say he's a guy who thought of the glass half full instead of half empty. And I was like, whoa, this is great. I got a lot of stuff. I'm going to throw a lot of stuff at Ben. I hope he can, you know, he can handle it. And Ben was like, come on, come with it. So it was great. And working with Matt, I'm glad I forgot who Matt was, all the movies he's done. Him and Ben, because I was watching stuff. I in the I'm like, this guy is huge. <laughs> and he, but when you're around him, it's like. He's just like another, another guy, which, is, which I love, you know, was real comfortable around these guys. I come in to bring the Jordans into Nike. That was my first day of work. And uh, Chris comes a little late to that meeting. And That's you, right. You were improvising. Only and brother I was, in the room. Yeah. Be late. <laughs> I was a little bit off. I was on camera, but off. But, and, uh, and Matt was on camera. Jason was off camera. So I didn't know what to do. The scene was going on for quite a while. And I, I never told you this. I checked my watch. And Jason's off camera, and he goes, good. <laughs> you check your watch. Fix your ties. So I fix my ties. Oh, yeah. Great business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a nice light set, yeah. you know? Yeah. First day. There's nothing cool about Nike. You would have to have a pretty compelling pitch. I can tell them the one thing the other companies can't compete with. Our basketball division is terrible. I do not love it. This was the absolute first choice best people for this role. And uh, it, the truth is the roles weren't up to the level. Uh, they weren't worthy of, of, of many of the actors until, you know, in particular, as I've said before, you know, when I had the chance to sit down with Michael Jordan, he was very adamant that the only person who was fit to play his mother was the, the best actor in the world, Viola Davis. I was like, okay, Mike, well, there's two lines in the script right now that the character has, so I probably Viola's not going to respond to that, but, I, but, I, but really what was so t beautiful about that gift and that testament to how obviously meaningful to him his mother was, was that inspired us to really see the story through his eyes, through his voice, and then reinvent it and understand and recognize and kind of maybe shame on us for not intuiting it, but nonetheless caught up to it to go, this is the central character. This is the protagonist the hub of this wheel. We're going to build the story around this person. But it also, it speaks to why I can't give direction to when you talk to somebody about, well, what is it like to be a young African-American athlete coming into a company in Oregon, and this is this guy who's, whose job it is to work to the, with the players and to have a connection so that they see that there is somebody like them who can mirror and reflect their experience. I'm not going to come to Viola and Chris and tell them, here's how the scene works. You know what I mean? It's really, mm -hmm. you have brilliant people who are not only gifted, brilliant actors, but also attuned to all of the complexity of these things. So you just have to be respectful and deferential and go, I have genius around me here. And that's a vulnerability. There's a, there's a when Viola says trust, I, it makes me feel like, yeah, I see how it's not just a performance, but it's also a, I'm gonna put my own voice and perspective in this. Mm -hmm. And when actors do that for you, I feel like you have to treat it enormously respectfully. And uh, I tried to. It's just not my style to react to compliments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish it were. I would have saved a lot of money in therapy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> there obviously is something that he sees in me that he also sees in his mom. It's, it's comparable characteristics, which was very, very, very <laughs> good for me because I just, like I said, I keep using the term Zen neutrality with this woman. I'm not like that. I want what I want when I want it. I get anxious. I overthink. I do. This is not a woman who does any of that. I feel like she moves through her life understanding her worth, understanding the worth of her family, being brave, all of those. And so it helps when you have Michael Jordan saying, I think you have her qualities. It's like, holy <laughs> Okay, because I don't see it, but if you see it, then I'm going to go for it. It's a good thing your agent didn't know about it. <laughs> there is something the like, the, the, <laughs> there's things in your performance, I mean, I've seen you on stage, that are so explosive and, mm -hmm. and dynamic and just, and, and you get all of that in her with, with, that, with that neutrality, which is amazing. Like, to me, one of the great, great, great moments in the movie 
is in our phone call at the end, all you did was take the phone away from your ear as, and you know, in like this kind of show of like patience and forbearance with this guy who just can't, you know, it's like, is telling you another reason why you can't have what you deserve. Mm -hmm. And it's so powerful. It's like, but it's not what I would expect from you. You know <laughs> what I mean? No, it's, it's, but no it's, it's Dolores and it's like, and it's, and it's, it's awesome. I really have felt like if, if one responsibility you have as a director is to be able to recognize when you're getting something spectacular yeah. and to not then just, you know, have versions and your own insecurity manifest and beat into it. If people come in and give you their souls, they give you their art, they give you something magnificent. Mm -hmm. There's one take or two takes and that's brilliant, then we're going to go home because that's it. And that's more than I ever possibly could have hoped for. That's the way that, that, that I tried to show respect to these performances to go, yep. And I could tell right away Viola wasn't one to be, um, you know, to tolerate obsequiousness or flatterers, you know. I was like, hey, that's great. Okay, well, uh, here's what I want to do. He'd be like, hey, that's great. And he'd look at me like, <laughs> and, and I'd be like, I know, I saw it too. And I think when maybe when you're constantly flattered, it it, it gets old, which probably is the burden of greatness, perhaps. Um, but it, nonetheless, I was like, I respect it, I see it, and what I loved about that performance was it's a very hard thing to do opacity. I felt like what you started to show is like this woman wasn't going to show anybody what she thought. Mm -hmm. You were never going to know what she thought, and of course. You realize ahead of me, the movie needed that. If you give it away, it's all, mm -hmm. and it also worked for that. It seemed to me like I got this, idea, this vision of a whole lifetime of going through life without betraying uh, one's inner true feelings yes. and having a mask and that that opacity, it was, but it, it's easy to just do, oh, I'm opaque and I'm not gonna show you anything. It's extremely difficult mm -hmm. to be opaque and have any, the sense that there's an enormous amount of feeling in inside. Yeah, you just right. don't know what it is. Right. So it makes you want to lean in yeah, even closer. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that is as good as that's acting. That's masterful yes. acting. That's, yeah. that's, that's, it's, it's, that's what Brando did, right? It's like, why am I leaning forward? Like, I can't take my <laughs> eyes off this person because it's not doing nothing. It's the opposite of doing nothing, but you're presented as if you're doing nothing, but everything in the world is happening right underneath. And it's like, awesome. It's a mask that a lot of African Americans wear as they move through life, especially Dolores's generation, of constantly being told that um, they're not good enough, or this is what you're worth, or people talking over you who say, you know, I know more than you, I know that you're smart, or whatever. And so you put the mask on, it's like a famous you know, poem, we wear the mask that grins and lies, you know. And that's what I felt with Dolores, with putting the phone. It's like, Sonny, I've already told you what I wanted. I've told you specifically what I wanted. And now you keep going on and on and on and on and on. So I'm going to let you go on and on. But then I'm going to remind you when you finish exactly what I said before. See, that's what I don't have. Every once in a while I have. <laughs> <laughs> the only time that the opacity, there was a crack in it was with you and Julius, that we'd get that little glimpse into a marriage. Also, you don't really know what's the whole story, but you can see how a married couple has been, the, just the little looks and the smiles and the this, you know, there's like these tiny moments mm -hmm. the two of you were like dancers. You know, I was like, we gotta always be shooting them at the same time because <laughs> they're always alive with each other. Mm -hmm. So it was always, you know, I could cut between, and it was like watching two dancers. You know, that was the fun though. That was the fun of the way you shot the damn thing. Have you guys played husband and wife before? We have, Yeah, we have, but, this was different because it was so active and so like just live with everybody as because you use multiple cameras awesome. so you had to stay active you had to stay in it it was auditory i keep talking that's that rave coming too. back because like, you know everyone's going to be going well there's your marriage i mean that, i feel like that's the i mean playing off hard of everybody off of chris off of jason you know we would give those eyes and the things were happening it was just so organic and rich and just fun to watch these guys, but then to be in it yeah. like that, mm -hmm. yeah. actively. You got, you, got, you got something off of him? A I did. I got, I got a little, I got a little yeah. something, no, something. No. something. I don't know. No. I got a little yeah, something. I didn't give you much. I didn't really see but someone was between us. Yeah. That must have been it. Yeah. You ask me what I do here. This is what I do. I find you players, and I feel it this time. Yeah, okay, it's risky. When you were selling sneakers out of the back of your Plymouth, that was risky. Don't change that now. For a rookie. Yes. Who's never set foot on an NBA court. 
that's the literal definition of rookie. Yeah. One of the great things of Ben, he's been um, <clears throat> he's been a huge champion of mine, and where I normally play nice guys, and if you do something halfway decent in Hollywood, they kind of want you to do it over and over again. And Ben has been the one person in my career that says, I see something different. I see something different. I know this is true. Yeah, yeah, you're not a nice guy. You're not a nice guy. Well, he knows, he knows your wife very well. Yeah. Give me something else. Yeah, exactly. I've heard enough. Yeah, I've heard enough. <laughs> so it was a blast to play. It was right on the, right on the page what to do. And, and to do this, uh, we worked together. This is our third time. And to do it with Matt, and I've said this before, but those phone calls, when, when I read the script, I was like, this is awesome, I'm so psyched, but I was bummed that there were phone calls, because phone calls are a pain in the ass. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are. You call the other actor, it cuts off, there's a script supervisor reading it kind of usually pretty um, dully. Monotone, yeah. Monotone. Mm -hmm. But he did this cool thing that I've never done, where Matt and I were down the hall from each other. So we were really talking to each other. Both, Matt, both on camera at the same at time. At the same time. Three cameras on each one yeah. of us. And Ben would go from room to room and we'd come together. It was so much fun. It was so much. And we could overlap and really talk to one another. I really love what you did. Because I've had agents to be, I've heard their comments, oh, I'm going to eat your ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was hurting. I had an agent. Oh, like, <laughs> that. I like oh, that. No. It was an improvisation. And he kept trying to come up with it. And it <laughs> felt like you didn't think it was a good enough insult. I'm going to nibble on you. I'm going to chew you. <laughs> like building up. And I love, the thing I love is like, I, okay, I get it. This guy's, um, the guy butting heads with, with Sonny. But, you know, the truth is like, you're, he's right. You know, my job is to protect Michael and Sven from people like yeah. you. Like, you have a point. He, that role is important. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately superseded by, and I think it, I like this piece of, of irony where you say, luckily, has a savvy advisor who thinks long term, and you're referring to Dolores, and Sonny thinks you're talking about yourself. That, you know, cutthroat agent person should be there on behalf of those athletes driving as Absolutely. hard as they can against mm -hmm. whoever it is, Nike, any mm -hmm. of these companies. Like, that's a heroic role in my mind. So I love that guy. I'm like, yeah, that's right. But because before they had agents, you had guys showing up at people's houses with briefcase of money and sign on this piece of paper mm -hmm. and you can play for our team. Because mm -hmm. I heard a lot of stories like that, you know? And so, like, don't go around. The agent to the family has a history that's yeah. rooted in real exploitation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got to piggyback on what Chris said. I did the, my, my scene at the phone booth was the same thing. I was I came to the set. I was like, where's Ben? Where's Matt? And they was like, Ben's upstairs. And Matt's up there. And then I'm right on the phone booth in real, real. And that's what you want as an actor. You want everything to be as real as possible so you can really go in, you know, channel what you're trying to say, the feeling, you know, of the scene. And I was like, Okay, all right. And then Matt got on the phone, and I'm like, it was like we had a real conversation. And that that that's only when you know somebody they know what they're doing as a director. So it was great. I remember that we, we, I was watching both scenes, and you did something that really surprised yeah, me. You yeah. brought out this this feeling of humanity and and, mm. and love that was that was so vulnerable and moving between these two men who were friends. And I thought it was an important side of masculinity to show. And it really moved me, and it moved me to tears when I saw it. And Matt was closer, and he came in. He saw me. He was like, "What? What is it?" I was like, "I wasn't really watching you." Chris was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What did I do?" <laughs> he was like, oh, Chris is going off. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, great." <laughs> well, we'll play it on him then. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I felt about all the dudes. I was like a sports movie. I'm the only girl, and it's going to be just hyper-masculine energy and people, you know. You always imagine, like, men with their face painted and, <laughs> you know, screaming, and I don't know what I had in mind. But um, I was surprised at the heart, you know, in the movie. What motivates, you know, these men. And with Jason, it's like talking about his daughter. and Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, you talk about just winning. That's what I see, you know, especially when I watch sports. I'm like, oh, they talk about winning. We just win the game, man. And then when they cry, there. she makes a joke out of it. And I always I go, win. Viola, you can't no. do that. <laughs> I don't do we that. We cry when we lose games. <laughs> That's what we do. I, As athletes. Don't, oh, my God. <laughs> no, but I love the heart. 
in the movie. And that's another thing. I love yeah. Julius and, and Viola. I'm like, a, you know, every time I see him out, I'm like, Julius Viola, you know, I'm like a groupie, you know. So, so it was great being in the movie with them. And Marlon is my, my buddy, comedy buddy. And yes, so it's it's all. It's true. All, all these guys, you know, really, really maybe except you, which is just a, because it's mass. But like, I feel like men are extremely vulnerable and sensitive and mm -hmm. and you know get hurt easily and it's beautiful that you all laid that out there there's always some actors like i gotta you know i gotta be tough you know what i mean no, no I, I would never uh and they're like okay you know all right you would never drop the thing <laughs> <laughs> so, but you all you all were willing to drop the ball which i found very very happy <laughs> what's the plan we build a shoe line around just him I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. Marlon and I were talking about this earlier because Marlon's worked a lot with his brothers and it's a similar thing. Like when you grow up with somebody and I think there, there's a, um, an understood baseline of, of just deep and abiding respect that kind of allows you to just dispense with all of the diplomacy that sometimes you get on a set where people talk around solving the problem because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm wondering if you might be a little, if you're feeling, and they try to. Quicker? Yeah. And he's just like, that was terrible, man. You got to say it faster. And I'm like, all right. That's and you right. just get to That's the true. solution a lot quicker, you know? And we do that when we write, too. He said one of the most profound things that anybody's ever said to me when he was 20 years old, we started writing Goodwill Hunting, and he said, hey, Judge me for how good my good ideas are, not how bad my bad ideas are. And mm. that, like, to me, is the most important thing mm. when you embark on a collaborative mm. process with somebody. It's like you gotta get the, the window open to throw every idea in there and, like, and, and not be afraid to have ideas, because we right. all have ideas. And sometimes right. you mm -hmm. need the idea, and then you iterate on that, Absolutely. and then they iterate on that, and then, and, then, yes. and then it builds into a good idea, but you mm -hmm. have to feel free to safe. express it. That's right, safe, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what Viola was saying about trust. That's really mm -hmm. what's at the root of it, because that's how you get to the essence mm -hmm. of the artist who's kind of putting themselves out there. I believe in your son. I believe he's the future. And his story is going to make us want to fly. But a shoe is just a shoe. Until my son steps into it. Thanks for watching Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the cast of Air. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.